Today we begin a uh, new sermon series. It's on, on gratitude, and I invite you to consider this not so much a sermon series, uh, but an invitation to a way of living, that the concepts of gratitude and thankfulness are not something that we're just trying to force into your brain during the month of November, but that something fundamentally different happens in the life of a Christian person when their heart is filled with gratefulness. Uh, Today we share probably the consummate, most famous uh, passage about gratitude in the Scripture as far as I'm concerned. It's from Luke chapter 17, the uh, story of the ten lepers, if you'll stand for our Scripture reading. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and praise God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Dear friends, this is the word of the Lord. May God send his Holy Spirit to bless it to our hearts as we gather in his name today. Please be seated. Life will bring you pain all by itself. And if you haven't lived long enough to know the truth of that, just wait. Because life has a way of bringing us pain Your job, my job, is to create joy, to somehow in the midst of the difficult things that come our way, turn them around and find something on the inside of us, some gift of God that we can find on the inside of us to turn life into a time of joy. Today I want to talk to you about the power of saying thank you. It changes not only the person you're speaking to, but it will change you in a way that many of us have yet to discover. Here today we have 10 lepers. Uh, Sometimes people think there is no more leprosy, uh, but there is leprosy in the world. It's called Hansen's disease. And uh, lepers, the, the, um, the nerve endings die in their extremities. And so what happens is Fingers and, and toes and ears and noses rot and, and um, disintegrate. And it's, it's a disease that frightens people that don't have it. And so in the Bible times, lepers were kept away from everyone else because somehow everyone was afraid that this would just hop from one person to the next and we didn't know how it was, was communicated. There was also this sense that lepers got this disease because they were sinful And so here they are, separated from their family, separated from the religious community, living a life that is so burdened with, with, God, how did it happen to me like this? Such a brokenness and an unhappiness. Is it any surprise to us that when they hear Jesus is coming, they cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Jesus does for them what Jesus does. He heals them and he sets them free. He gives them a chance at a different kind of life. Not all of them take him up on it, but he gives them a chance at a new life. How about you? Have you ever had a time in your life when you felt that you weren't good enough to go to church, that you didn't fit in, that you weren't righteous enough, that somehow those people wouldn't want you? Do you ever feel that way about your family? 
ostracized, broken, rejected, maybe going through a divorce. You ever look at yourself and, and look in your life and, and, and count your sin and think, oh my gosh, God would never be able to forgive the things that I have done. If you have ever felt any of those things, then I want to suggest to you today that Jesus offers the very same to us as he did to these 10 lepers, an opportunity for us to be healed, an opportunity for us to be restored, an opportunity for us to be cleansed, an opportunity for us to learn to see the world in a completely different way. I hope you can look at your life and see that God has already done many great things for you. I hope you know that your sin is forgiven. And if you don't, you call me. And I would love to sit down and personally walk you through the process of finding forgiveness of sin because it's available through God in, in Christ. I hope you think of, of God and, and are grateful for the many, many things that he has, has done. Um, but ingratitude is rampant in our society. Ungratefulness is just kind of a part of how Americans live, even American Christians. And I would suggest to you today that every time we act like we deserve something, it's a sin. The good thing is, it's the kind of a sin that we can do something about. And today, if you find yourself um, as someone who's fallen into the habit of thinking you deserved better, I don't just want you to feel bad if you recognize ungratefulness in your life. I want you to understand God gives us the power to make a choice to change, to see it, to see everything completely differently. Um, ten were healed. Only one went back. Jesus said, what, where, where are the other nine? Sometimes I wonder if he would feel or sense of us. All the blessings that I poured out to you, all of the love that I gave, all the grace that I bestowed, just these few have come back. You know, if there's anything that I want to radiate from our church, it's a collective gratefulness, a collective shout of appreciation and thank you to God that we would understand that we've been blessed and touched by him in so many, many ways. Well, if you were like me, you were, you were raised to be polite. We were taught to say please and yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you ever find yourself saying thank you and it's just something that you say because you were taught to say it? We do that. And I want to suggest to you that there is an enormous difference between saying thanks for being here, thanks for being here today, and getting in somebody's grill and saying Greg, I so appreciate who you are. Thanks for being a part of this church. Thanks for teaching disciple with your life. Thanks for the way you treat me. Thanks for the way that, that I feel when I'm around you. See, friends, there's a little T, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a big T, capital T, thank you. And we only get there when we stop to think about what's happened for us. And there are so many people around us that we do not appreciate, so many things around us that we take for granted. And what happens is we're missing some of the greatest moments of life because instead of hearts that are filled with gratitude, we tend to live like one that is entitled. Oh, there's a word we don't like. You know, there's a lot of talk on, on TV and the papers about entitlements about how people take things to, to themselves that maybe they shouldn't have. Well, I want to ask you, oh Christian, when you wake up in the morning, do you feel like you're entitled to health? When you get into your car and put the key in, are you entitled to it starting? Are you mad if it doesn't? When you're at a restaurant, I'm terrible about this. I have this feeling like I go to a restaurant this is a place for me to crash and rest. Like everything is going out of my brain and I'm just going to like kind of chill. And so like for five or three minutes, I don't know how long it takes, but I mean 
Nobody, nobody saw me. Nobody's paying attention to me. I'm going to pay the bill. I'm going to leave a tip. I'm entitled to more than this. When you're driving down the road, is it a privilege for you to drive? Or is that my space and don't you dare try to take it from me? We tend to live as those who are entitled. Some of your friends are in Russia this week. I will never forget what happened to me, the things that I saw and felt the first time I went to Russia. And it's pretty much happened any time I've gone anywhere outside of the country because although I've heard the stories, you don't realize how blessed we are we take so many things for granted until you get to a place. I meet these young people who never complained about anything that they were fed because many days they don't know where their next meal is coming from. I met young people, and they, they looked great. They looked like y'all. Y'all look great. And I saw them, and I thought, well, they don't look poor. Look how nicely they're dressed. But the second day, they were wearing the same clothes. And the third day, they were wearing the same clothes. And the fourth day, they were wearing the same clothes. You know, if I give you a shirt, what do you think? Gee, that's kind of weird. When this conference was over, I collected all the clothes that I took and I called these young men aside, and I privately gave them a shirt. And you would have thought I'd given them a million dollars because the very simple things of life they don't have. When was the last time you walked by your closet and looked in there? I got shirts up here, the button ones. Down here, I got the, the polo shirts. Over here, I got the T-shirts. And then I got the shirts that you paint with, right? Those are some of our favorite shirts, right? When was the last time you looked at the simple things that you had and said, oh, God, thank you. Thank you for clothes. Thank you for these people in my life. Some of the things that we take for granted the most and are the least appreciative of are the greatest gifts to us. They're the people, our friends, our family. When was the last time you got past, thanks for supper, and sat down with your spouse or your child or your cousin or your neighbor and said, no, you don't understand. My heart is grateful to you. I am living every day in appreciation of the kind of people I am sharing this life with. Do you know why you were born here instead of North Korea? I love asking that question. There's no answer to it. We were blessed. We were fortunate. That does not give us the right, though, to act like we deserve everything that we have. And when our heart begins to change and see the blessings that God has given to us, all of life will change. When John Wesley was a student, a porter knocked on his door. It was a cold night. Wesley suggested, friend, you need a thicker jacket. This is the only coat I have, the porter replied, and I thank God for it. Wesley asked the man if he'd eaten that day. He said, I've had nothing today but water to drink, but I thank God for that. Wesley was moved by the man's sincerity, and he said to him, You thank God when you have nothing to wear or eat. What else do you thank God for? The man said, I thank God that he's given me life, a heart to love him, a desire to serve him. After the man left with a coat from Wesley's closet, some money for food, and words of appreciation for the witness he had made, Wesley wrote in his journal, I will never forget that porter. He convinced me that there is something to Christianity 
that as of yet I am still a stranger. Friend, do you believe in Jesus? I celebrate with you. But to live a grateful life changes everything. To wake up in the morning and see the good changes everything about your outlook, every encounter with every person, every word, how you feel. You know, when we step out into life and we're collecting to ourselves, hurry and bring me my food. Get out of my space. That's my space to drive. You can't collect enough to yourself to make yourself happy. We can't do it. But when we see everything as a blessing, everything as a benefit, and we become thankful for the simple things, we begin to say thank you to the people for the simple things that they do, then suddenly we are full. We become full by, by giving away ownership to things and just seeing what we have and being thankful. When you say thankful to someone, when you say thank you to someone so that they feel your thanks, they walk away and their heart is touched, don't you know that? But you walk away from that and you are different as well because you've put your life in a proper perspective. I am reading an author who says that uh, when we say thank you, uh, we return our lives to a natural state of joy. And I'm reading this and I'm scratching my head and I kind of get it, but I kind of don't agree with it because in my experience, a human's natural state is not a state of joy. Um, as I experience most humans, our natural state is one of complaining and unhappiness and entitlement and, and, and just pain. So I don't know that I would say that gratitude returns us to our natural state. But I will tell you this, and please see and believe with me, that being the one that says thank you takes you to a special place, takes you to a holy place, it beams you up to a different place where we are living above and beyond circumstances where there is a joy that comes into our life. And I don't think that's a natural state for us, but it sure is a great place to be. Don't you feel good when you are thankful to someone for what they have done for you? Gratitude unlocks our lives. It, it frees us to find the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough. It makes you feel full and bursting with delight. When we say thank you, our relationships become right. When I say thank you to God, I'm putting him in his rightful place. And I'm putting myself in the place where I need to live as someone dependent and appreciative of who he is. When I say thank you to you, I am honoring you. We were made to honor one another in Romans 12, Paul wrote, in honor preferring one another, put the other person ahead of you. I'm not talking about squishing yourself or feeling terrible about yourself, but I'm talking about the joy that comes when we honor another person. When we learn to take serious the concept of saying thank you, all of our relationships begin to fit in the right way. And we wake up in the morning and we go to bed at night and we feel completely different and completely joyful about life because we're dispensing grace. It's pouring through us and we're loving people. That's what we're created to do. There's a song, Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. When was the last time you counted your blessings? I have a, a daughter who recently made a very big life decision, and she was asking for my advice. And I tell her, well, take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle. On one side, write the pros. On the other side, write the cons, and see what is weighted the most. I want to suggest to you today that there is something very holy and helpful about us sitting down and counting our blessings making a list of what God has done for us, looking at the things that he has brought our way and saying thank you for them. 
You know, uh, gratitude um, is such an amazing thing. Meister Eckhart, a monk, I've been reading about this guy, a Dominican monk of the 12, 1200s, uh, he wrote, if the only prayer we learn in this life is thank you, it is enough. If the only prayer I learn in this life is thank you, that's enough. Some years ago, I was, um, I was uh, helping at a Camino, kind of a, a retreat um, thing, and I was supposed to be the pastor that went to encourage these people. And uh, I gave my little talk, and then it was time for prayer. And so five or six of us gathered in a circle, and, and we prayed. And I don't remember if the guy, this guy was first or last or third, but I will never forget the prayer that came out of his, his mouth. Because he said, God, I have so much. I just ask today for a grateful heart. Now, how would your life change? How would my life change if we began to pray, God, I'm not asking for anything else, just a heart that's grateful, a heart that's appreciative? Do you see in that moment, friends, that everything changes, everything becomes different? Sometimes I think about how I think, do you ever think about how you think? And I think, I'm not very smart. It takes me a while to get things. Uh, it takes me days sometimes to decide what I should have done two days ago, and that's a little embarrassing. But I should be thankful for the fact that it, it even it shows up late, you know. Um, what if the one thing you worked on in your Christian life this year was to be thankful? What if the one thing... The one thing that we lifted up was learning to be thankful. I would suggest to you that everything else would change as well. And I will tell you this about thankfulness. It's a personal thing. I'm not thankful for a car. A car is an inanimate object. I'm thankful to God for a car. The first car I got I was thankful to my dad for that. He paid $100 for a 1963 Ford Galaxy. Gratitude always involves someone. I'm glad we had a good class on Tuesday night. I'm thankful to that. I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to Bill. I'm thankful to the people that came. I'm not just thankful for friendship. I'm thankful that you are my friend. I'm not just thankful for this church. I'm thankful that you have made this church wonderful. Do you see that gratitude is a personal thing? And when we simply say, little t, thank, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for being chairman of the board this year. No. We have to find the way to get into the grill of the person. The one leper that turned back didn't say it over his shoulder. He turned back, and he went to Jesus, and he said, thank you. Today I'm suggesting that you have the power, a God-given power, to change your life, to change how you feel about living. And it begins with deciding that we will no longer be among the nine that do not say thankful. We, we will no longer be among the nine who are not appreciative, but instead we will choose to be the one to go back, and not just to God, and not just to Jesus but for the server who's a little bit late, to the person who cuts me off in traffic because I'm learning patience from that, to my neighbor, to my friend, to those people that we live with, when you say capital T, thank you, their moment changes and your life changes for the better. Let's pray. Father, we have friends, we have family, we have a church, we have a car. Could we ask you for one more thing? Could you help me? Could you help us? Find that place of gratitude 
Could you give us the gift of a grateful heart? In Jesus' name, amen.